Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Praise God. We welcome you to the Daily Fountain devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Today being the 17th of October, 2024. Please shower prayer. Almighty God, Scripture says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning, all things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was like the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehend enough. Lord, as we look into your word, let the light of your word shine perpetual in our hearts. Grant us a receptive heart, and to your glory we shall come with understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Of course, we have a topic for today's devotional guide, which says, Disobedience destroys destinies. I take it again. Disobedience destroys destinies and I would like to tell us before we read our scriptural passage for today that you cannot be breaking principles and at the same time be claiming promises I want us to put that one down very important you cannot be breaking principles and at the same time, be claiming promises. The kingdom we are in is the kingdom of principles. Anything does not go. We have a guideline, we have a principle that is a structure in this kingdom. As many that want to genuinely serve the Lord, there is a guideline, and that is the scriptures. Whatever is not in conformity with God's word cannot stand. It does not matter who says it or who has said it. The word of God is integrity of God. Shall we please go to our text? First Samuel chapter 13, verses 5 to 25. Then the Philistines gathered together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen. And people as the stand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and encamped in Michmash to the east of Beth Haven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, for the people were distressed, then the people hid in caves, in tickets, in rocks, in holes and in pits and some of the hebrews crossed over the jordan to the land of god and gilead as for saul he was still in gilgal and all the people followed him trembling then he waited seven days according to the time set by samuel but samuel did not come to gilgal and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, Bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened, as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him, that he might greet him. And Samuel said, What 
have you done? And Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash. Then I said, the Philistines will come down on me at Giga, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offer a bond offering. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. Mark that. You have done foolishly. It means that every act of disobedience is a foolish act. Every act of disobedience is a foolish act. You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord, your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man for after his own heart. For the Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be the commander over his people. Because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Then Samuel rose and went up from Gilgal to Gibeah of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people present with him, about 600 men. Saul, Jonathan, his son, and the people present with him remained in Gibeah of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Michmash. Then raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned to the road to Ophrah. To the land of Shua. Another company turned to the road to Beth Horon. And another company turned to the road of the border that overlooks the valley of Zebium toward the wilderness. Now, there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make sword or spares. But all the Israelites would go down to Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattock, his axe, and his sickle. And the charge for a sharpening was a pin for the plowshares, the mattock, the forks, the axes, and to set the points of the goats. So it came about, and so so it came about on the day of the battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan, but they were found with Saul and Jonathan his son. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the pass of Michmash. This is the word of God. When Samuel anointed Saul, he ordered him to wait for seven days in Gilgal. I'm trying to paraphrase the story for, for context sake. He, 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 he instructed, Samuel instructed Saul to wait for him for seven days in Gilgal. But in spite of the clear instruction and out of pressure, Saul disobeyed and went ahead to offer sacrifices. The behavior of Saul cost him and his generation the kingship in history. Instead of being repentant when confronted by Samuel, he tried to justify his unacceptable behavior. Samuel promptly informed him that his disobedience has cost him the kingship and he abandoned Saul and left for his home. Hallelujah. People of God, I would like to say this, that no genuine reason is acceptable before God for disobedience to his will as expressed in his word. There is no, there is no genuine reason that is acceptable for disobedience. 
And every act of disobedience is an act of foolishness. God cannot help a man that does not know his way. And how can a man know God's way without God's instruction? It is through God's instruction that God fulfills his will. And we could say in the context of the scripture read that that day the kingdom of Saul will have been established. Had he been as he obeyed God, obedience is one, is, one, is one important thing that God requires from every believer. Before, the Bible says, if, if, thou, if thou obey my commandments, it says, ye are my disciples. So through obedience, people get to know that we are of the Lord. Any man that named the name of God and that does not walk in obedience is a counterfeit. It does not matter the title. It does not matter the, the level or the years he has, he has spent in the church. One of the things that we use in this kingdom to weigh those who are the disciples and followers of Jesus we do that through the obedience of God's word. If you obey God's command, it turns you to a commander. Lack of obedience has ruined destinies in our generation. So when you see somebody and you want to know that, the, if, you, if, you want to, if you want to measure how much the person knows God, what you just do is that, look at how much the person obeys God. Through, a, through the obedience of a man, you can measure his stature and his knowledge of God. So obedience is what God rates in this kingdom. No man can walk with the Lord without the heart of obedience. So this morning, as the Lord is prompting us, as we have seen in the case of Saul, who because of the pressure of people, disobeyed God through the mouth of Samuel. People were pressurizing him. They told him, the Philistines are coming up against you. Go and make the sacrifice. Go and make the sacrifice. And immediately he did it. And of course I want to tell us that every act of disobedience, we are always direct recipient of the consequence. People you have allowed, you have allowed or you are permitted in your life to, to sway you off the radar of God's will will not be there to partake of the consequence. The people that pressured Saul were not there, were not partakers of the consequences of his disobedience. Paul, Saul became the direct recipient of the consequence of his disobedience. I, I pray this morning that may God grant us grace to obey him, to walk in prompt obedience in the name of Jesus. And now this morning God is saying to us that Samuel rebuked Saul for disobeying God. And we have said that no reason is acceptable before God for disobeying his will. Saul's disobedience is interrupted his destiny. Have you allowed disobedience to ruin your destiny also? What have you done? And it has cost you destiny. What have you done? And it has cost you purpose. Who have you allowed into your life? And has destroyed and jeopardized God's plan. Who, who is that lady that you have allowed in your life in the name of love? And has stolen purpose from you. Who is that lady you have allowed? I, 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 I'm speaking to us already this morning. Oh, I'm speaking on behalf of God. The word of God is coming straight to us as a sword. Who, who is that man you have allowed to... Father, help you to compromise the standard of God's word. I want to tell you this morning that destiny has no second chance. It is better you take decisions that will hurt you today and have a greater impact as a positive one in your destiny tomorrow than to allow people or allow anybody to, uh, to, to make you compromise. The Lord is saying this morning, Obedience is important. So I want to ask us 
have you allowed disobedience to ruin your destiny? Many people today treat the cross of Christ and his word with total disdain. The level of disobedience to the word of God in the church is alarming. And the contempt shown to the church and the minister of God's word is disturbing. People of God, the level of disobedience in the church today is, is, is alarming. And the way people treat the things of God today, they treat it with disdain. And of course, I want to address my generation. There's something going on now on social media. There's this, there's this trend that whenever anything comes up about the church, or concerning the church, or the men of God, it will, it will trend. And devil is using Christian to trend things that bring disrepute and disdain to the name of God. Devil is using us. You cannot try this with other religion. They will look for you and destroy you. It's as if our own God is very patient and lenient. Today, when you go on social media, people speak ill of the supernatural. If you tell them that God has done this, they will tell you how. How is it possible? They will turn that to mockery. They will speak against supernatural things. They so much water down the act of God. You go on social media, you see people say, is it possible? Can this happen? Is is an RNG miracle. RNG supernatural. I want to ask you. In fact, I want to tell us that if it were in our days, that Jesus Christ turned water to wine, there will be a problem. If it were in our days that Peter walked on water, there will be a problem. People will not believe. There is this high level of unbelief in our own days. I pray that the devil will not use the church to destroy the church. The devil will not use the believer. In fact, I pray that the devil will not use me. You have to pray for yourself. That the devil will not use you to destroy the church of God. In the name of catching crews, in the name of looking for things to trend, we have reduced the power of God to a crust of bread. May God show us mercy in the name of Jesus. Say amen. Some people disobey godly rules guiding marriage. Of course, we have seen today. People disobey godly rules guiding marriage. We have seen today a man marrying a man is madness. Woman, woman marrying woman is madness. Human being having sexual intercourse with animals is madness. It is unbiblical. It does not matter those who embrace it as long as it is it negates the word of God. It is madness. It is disobedience. You don't change your personal behavior or standard to fit in to the word of God. You, you don't change the word of God, rather, to fit into your personal behavior. You change your personal behavior to fit in to God's word. Don't change the word of God. Don't perverse the word of God. There is a lot of perversion going on now concerning marriage. May God show us mercy in the name of Jesus. People disobeying godly rules, guiding business, guiding relationship, in fact, guiding marriage, guiding dressing, grand examination. We have, a, we, have, we have a lot of things going on. People can dress anyhow, thinking that it is, it is, it is, it is fashion. The standard of God, standard show, having a seal, that God knows those who are his. And let those who name the name of God depart from iniquity. May God show us mercy in the name of Jesus. Are you living in disobedience to your parents? Husband, teachers, pastors, bosses, and those in authority? Are you obstinate, giving relevant reason to justify your disobedience when confronted with God's word? Repent now before you truncate your God's given destiny. Devil will always tempt, 
tempt a man in the line of his weakness. What you are doing now, it is a calculated arrangement of the devil to truncate what is called destiny in your life. We have talked talk to you about living, leave, leave alcohol. Leave alcohol, you say, yeah, but is it, is, it, is it not biblical? Jesus Christ turned water to wine. You are trying to pervert the word of God to fit into your immoral heart. Leave smoking. Don't go into internet fraud. Those are the things that God has, by his mercy through his word, put in our mouth this day to come and tell you. That it does not, it does not matter whoever is involved. Disobedience is disobedience. Today we see our leaders call it misappropriation of font and a lot of names. It is stealing. And stealing is disobedience. If you are in a church and you are a believer, it, no, it does not matter how many years you have invested in your service. If you are doing it in contrast to God's word, you have no reward. There is no reward for a man that works in disobedience. There is no reward for that man. You can be a preacher of the gospel for many years. If you do it in disobedience, you have wasted your time, resources, and destiny. It does not matter your title. If you are a preacher of the gospel, if you name the name of the Lord, and you are still walking in disobedience, it does not matter how many years you have been in that position. You can be preaching and people are applauding you. If your work is screened in the context of the word of God, and you fall into the side of disobedience, you have wasted your time. You have wasted your service. Of course, you have wasted your destiny. We are in a generation now that people celebrate disloyalty. People celebrate everything called force. People criticize the truth. People of God. God is asking us to tell you this morning that the act of disobedience will only ruin you and ruin everything you represent. And it is devil's own mechanism in making sure that you don't have your reward. I want to ask you, are you ready to walk in obedience? God is still in the business of helping people. Will you allow God to help you? Jesus Christ came to set you free from the slavery of sin. Will you embrace his liberation? Will you embrace his redemptive power? Will you embrace his redemptive work? Will you allow him to help you this morning? I want you to look at it. What are those things you call addiction? Allow Jesus. What are those things you just call, I, I can't leave this thing, is inborn? Allow Jesus. If you allow Jesus today, you will see that that addiction will drop off you. If you allow Jesus today, you will see that that thing you call emotional attachment to that lady will drop. Oh, that man that has always been around you. All he wants is to destroy and jeopardize your destiny. If you allow Jesus, you will receive strength to say no. The Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us to say no to every form of ungodliness. One of the things that Jesus will do to you, as you are certain this morning, as your personal Lord and Savior, is that he will furnish you with strength to say no to every form of ungodliness. Please bow as we pray. As many of us that want to give our life to Jesus this morning, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10, it said, with the heart a man believes, with the mouth a man confesses unto salvation. So I want to say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died for me. I confess with my mouth that you are my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Come my reign. As from today, blot my, out my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Send your Holy Spirit to my heart to help me do your will. In Jesus' name, I pray. And as many of, as many of you that have basileded, I pray for you receive strength to come back. Like that prodigal son receives strength, receive grace to come back. In the name of Jesus. 
we pray and we break every shackle of sin and addition upon your life this day in the name of Jesus. We say you are free from every power of addition. You are free from every shackles of iniquity in the name of Jesus. You belong to the Lord. You shall serve the Lord. You shall please the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.